Hey foodies, thanks for watching. It is pawpaw season and I am so excited about these. So pawpaws are native to Ontario. Um, it's a great fruit and they don't last very long. They, they have about a month of a growing season and they're so good. If you can get your hands on some, they're at farmer's markets typically and these things are, they're the bee's knees. They're so good. And we're gonna make a panna cotta with pawpaw. And to start, we're gonna have a bain-marie, so we've got six ramekins that I buttered, and I'm gonna fill the bain-marie up with some hot water just to get the ramekins to warm up. There we go, and I'll put a little bit more in when it goes in the oven. Okay, ooh, that's warm. So I'm going to set this over to the side. And we're going to get started. So to start, we want to warm up our cream and our milk in a pot. And it's just so that it's warm to the touch, but not steaming. So I'll just get that going. Let's put it on a medium heat just to start. Meanwhile, I'm going to separate my eggs because I want four egg whites. So we're going to go. And I'm going to keep my egg yolks for later because you never know when I want to make like a Caesar dressing or something like that. And four. So I'll set that aside. Okay, so I'm going to whisk up the egg whites a little bit, just to break them up. And then I'm going to mix in my, my sugar. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside, and then I'm going to slowly add in the warm cream and the milk when the time comes. In the meantime, I'm going to cut into one of these pawpaws. And you score it across the end. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. It's just, oh, it smells so good. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bowl. And we're gonna do a combination of the pulp in the, in the bottom of the ramekin. And we're also gonna make a little paste to go on top of the panna cotta so that we have something to enjoy it. Because sometimes when you bake with with papa, the flavor gets lost. And this flavor is something that you don't want to miss. The panna cotta I'm making today is a gelatin-free panna cotta. You can get gelatin-based ones, but I wanted to do just a little bit of egg and, and make the panna cotta that way. And it's really quite pleasant. Set that aside. And I'm going to get a fork and I'm just going to mash it just a little bit just to make it more into a pulp. And I'm going to set that aside. Now we're going to check the cream. And it's warm. So I'm going to take it off the heat. And just before I start mixing the two together, I'm going to add a little bit of my, my Grey Goose homemade vanilla. And I'm going to show you in a future episode how to make your very own vanilla extract. It's so good. They take about six months to make, which is exciting. And nothing beats homemade. So we're going to add teaspoon of that and just whisk that in a little bit so I'm gonna start by tempering the egg just so that it doesn't cook it because you don't want you don't want uh, scrambled eggs so there's just a little bit in there just to warm the eggs up a little bit 
And a little bit more. And I'll go a little bit more. And then I'm going to pour the whole thing back into the oven. Okay, so we're going to mix it. Marie over here there we go I'm gonna put just a little bit in each just to give a little bit of uh, flavor not a lot because I'm gonna use most of it at the end and if you don't have papa you could use strawberry you could use blueberry a bit of a jam something like that it might be quite nice I'm thinking a marmalade would be nice but in the season of pawpaw land, it's time for pawpaw. So we're just going to slowly fill these up. Oh, that smells so good already. So this is going to go in the oven for about 60 to 70 minutes. We're going to check and see when I shake them a little bit, there should only be about a quarter size amount that jiggles a little bit. So we're going to pop them, pop them in the oven and we'll pull them out and we'll take a look and see what they look like. There we go. They look beautiful. They took about 15 minutes longer than what I had hoped, but that's, that's fine. You can see there's a little tiny bit of a jiggle. They do set up as, as they cool, which is nice. And I'm just excited to try it. But before we get started, I want to talk about our sponsor today, and that was Frankie's. Frankie's gluten-free flour is wonderful. And when I'm using a flour in any of my baking, I go to Frankie's because it works cup for cup, and it's really good. If you're looking for more information, you can check out the, the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get back to Papa Panna Cotta. So I'm going to take one of these, let's go with that one. I've let this cool completely because otherwise it's just not going to set up right. And I'm going to slice around it, moment of truth. Okay. And then, beautiful, look at that, that's gorgeous. So I want to finish it with just a little bit of pawpaw right on top. Come on. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, that looks spectacular. And I don't know about you, but I want to try this. It's firm. almost custard-like. You can definitely taste the vanilla in it. Um, it's not overly sweet. It's got a nice smooth texture. The pawpaw, which I thought I got some of the this pawpaw on the top, but I didn't. It's very subtle, the part that's inside. But when you add the actual pawpaw, it just takes it to a whole new level. It's so good. I look forward to reading all of your comments below. Thanks for watching.